Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot for November 22nd. Thank you so much for being here. Um, welcome new subscribers. I'm very grateful to have you. I'm sort of about 50 away from my 10,000 mark, so that's very exciting. Um, and I plan on doing a pet parade, hopefully when I, I reach that mark, but either way, um, there will be a pet parade sometimes around the holiday season. For those of you who are wondering. Um, um, <clears throat> one other last quick note, anybody looking for a private reading, um, the information is in the Dropbox below. Send an email to soulprint888 at gmail.com and I will send you out the information that you know you're going to need to know um, to, to pursue a reading. Um, currently I'm booking um, mid-December. So there's that. All right, so <clears throat> we have a special counsel. We have um, that former guy trying to make a comeback. Um, those are sort of the two big things um, that are kind of going on right now. And I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to do sort of <clears throat> mini readings on both topics and see if when it's said and done, we can come to some sort of kind of consensus um, by looking at the situation sort of from 30,000 feet. Um, I did hear, I think it was today, that, you know, there's talk in the Biden camp about um, the fact that if he were to run against Trump, there's a very strong feeling that he would absolutely retain the presidency. He would win re-election, Biden. Um, but if Biden was running against a younger opponent, that could actually... Um, like not work out as well for him. So I don't know. I just can't help but feel this is just way early days um, to be able to sort of think about who's running and when and how. But let's take a look and see what we can find out. Okay, so we're going to start with the former guy because why not? Um... Thank you for all of your good wishes and the healing energy, um, the Reiki, all of it. I'm so grateful. Um, all three of us in the house, my sister, my daughter, Vanessa, and I are all still struggling um, with COVID. It's not been um, horrible, horrible, but it is lingering. So I just have to put up with my stuffy nose. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with Trump. What's his strategy? What? How has he reacted to this sort of special counsel? What was his motivation um, for wanting to announce a presidential run so early, so quickly? Um, and of course, you know, people are saying, oh, they just wanted him to, to put it off until after December 6th because he's going to hurt the Georgia um, runoff election. Anybody who actually thinks that Trump cares about that hasn't been paying attention for six years. They, they truly haven't been paying attention because that kind of a calculus is never part of something that would enter into Trump's consciousness about maybe doing something to help the party or help um, a candidate. All right. Here we go. Um, Trump's current thinking. Trump's current thinking. Trump's current thinking. See how he's doing, shall we? Okay. Starting with the three of wands. All right, so he um, he launched his bid when he did. I'm just I'm just stepping into the energy because he thought that it would um, 
Okay, so two things. He announced it before the election that he would have this big announcement because there was a part of his head that thought that he would, um, that it would somehow be helpful. But he didn't really care about that. But it was name recognition. He wanted his name out there. He wanted people talking about him as attention focused to, you know, an election. Um, he wanted sort of everybody to be saying, oh, Trump's got this big announcement. I wonder what he's going to say. Well, we're pretty sure we know what we know see what happens like that that after it when he didn't do so well in the election or his candidates didn't do so well in the election part of it was almost to distance himself or distract from the losers okay because that's how he sees things winners losers if you're a loser he doesn't want to play with you he's taking his ball and he's going to some other court okay so that was sort of um, what was what was going around. All right, he is truly motivated by two primary energies. One is fear, and one is. Fear of, of, of being caught up in um, court battles, in, in the law, in that kind of thing. And for some reason in his head, he seemed to think that if he announced his presidency early, then if they were going to indict him for something, particularly if they were going to indict him for something that could cause, um, what is it, that 14th Amendment to kick in, like that cause him to actually be invalidated to run. He somehow thought that if he was already running, that would offer him some degree of <clears throat> a shield. Okay. So he doesn't want to get thrown in jail. He doesn't want to be found guilty of anything. All right. And the other motivator is flat out greed and revenge. Okay. So the greed and the revenge are about, well, greed right? Because, you know, um, being a Trump in office was a very lucrative period of time for him and his family. That's part of it. Um, and part of it is now he has some experience. He can really figure out how to wheel some deals. Um, and the other part of it is just flat revenge. Anybody who does not support him, who did not support him, who now is not supporting him, he's out to get them. The problem is, is right now, anyways, Big name donors do not want him around. And so I'm not quite sure how he thinks he can go up against some of these more powerful donors, particularly because he's not likely to be in office. Uh, it looks like there may be some, some health concerns. Um, not sure whether these health concerns are um, as a result of his own inner um, turmoil. It kind of feels that way. So, you know, somebody made a really, really good point because, you know, I've been saying for a long time, I don't know how this guy doesn't have a stroke. Um, I think it was Ellie um, from um, Ellie Down Under who made the point that Trump has lived his entire life in chaos and that level of stress is his baseline. That is where he functions from. That's where he's always functioned from. So as we're looking at it, we're thinking, oh my God, like I would collapse under all of this. For him, it really is sort of business as usual. What is different and what is causing the stress and the anxiety boils down to a fear of, um, I don't even think it's imprisonment because there's a part of him that really doesn't think, even if he was guilty, that they would actually send him to prison. But it is fear of being restricted, fear of being restricted from running for president again, fear of being restricted and just having the freedom. Because literally, even if they put him under house arrest, um, that would be a significant, um, it would hamper him considerably. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on there. Oh, Lord, he spends so much time being angry um, about the loss, his loss, other people's losses, um, what went wrong. Um, he's angry about the fact that he is being kind of made to look 
um, like a really inept president. He doesn't even know the basic rules about, you know, presidential files. Um, you know, he's taking stuff he has no business to take. And he, you know, it, it, he he set up situations and policy wise that, you know, by by and large have had to be reversed or, or dialed back because they were just not um, the way they should have been. So there is a lot of regret about actually how he um, sort of ran his presidency. But of course, understand the regret is not that he did something wrong. The regret is that he, there were the wrong people in place. They were the wrong people advising him. You know, he needed people who were even bigger sycophants than they were um, in order to really help him achieve that that goal of, you know, country domination. Um, we've all heard that Ivanka is not interested in becoming involved at all, again, in another political career for fathers. It actually looks like she's going to stay the, in that position. Um, there's too much that she's liable for. There's too much um, going on with Jared, it feels like, they don't need the additional scrutiny. Um, and in a very selfish way, they feel like they've gotten everything out of the presidency that they could. Um, you know, it it feels very much like Ivanka loves her father, but I think that there are times and days and weeks and months that perhaps she doesn't like him. Um, and she's just done with that energy. I think it was far more stressful on her than she let on or anybody believed um, her choice. She absolutely could have said, dad, I can't do it anymore. I'm going to go be a mom, take care of my kids and leave. But of course she didn't do that. Um, but it really does feel like going forward, she is not going to, um, you know, support him. There is judgment coming. Okay. It, feels as if it's never going to arrive. And that is Trump's hope. Trump wants to run out the clock. He wants to delay even, even if he gets charged. And even if there's a trial and even if he's found guilty, he will appeal it and appeal it and appeal it. All right. So there is definitely, he has a strategy. Don't think that he's just stumbling around in the dark. He has a strategy. It is the strategy that he always uses. Delay, delay, distract, distract, delay, distract. That That's his ball of wax. Okay, that's what he does. Um, and he will continue that behavior going forward. He will yell on screen about how everything is, you know, politically motivated. It's not. Um, but he he's, there's an awareness um, that there is a judgment coming down on his head and um, and he feels it's unjust. He feels like he didn't do anything wrong, so he doesn't know why he's getting picked on. But again, that is his baseline. He never thinks he does anything wrong. He doesn't know why people are so mean to him. That's his space. That's where he lives. He has pulled in some better legal minds to help him with some of these issues. But the reality is, is that's going to become more and more difficult for him to achieve and maintain because he is pushing his lawyers to file these frivolous lawsuits, etc. And judges are now pushing back and they are, um, you know, putting sanctions on people, um, one judge has threatened to refer um, that um, Aileen Abba up um, to, um, you know, like a law review um, to the bar. So he's going to have a hard time because um, as things cement a bit more, okay, as things become far more clear, um, he is going to be pushing and truly... It, his lawyers are going to be pushing back because, you know, they kind of have their careers to look out for. In Trump's mind, he sees this very rosy 
rosy future. He sees success. He sees, um, you know, he's seen, he's, he's like shielded, right? Um, you know, people still refer to him as Mr. President and the president and the 45th president. Um, you know, that's his shield. He is very volatile right now. He is angry. Um, he's going to try every single trick in the book that he has. And to be fair, he wrote a good chunk of that book with his, his lifelong behavior. And um, it's, he understands on some level that um, there's probably indictments coming. But I, he really believes that if he screams loud enough, um, that will draw the attention away and frankly just weaken um, his opposition's momentum. So weaken Department of Justice's uh, prosecutor's momentum. Um, the I also want to say that um, there are going to be, I don't know who, they're not showing me, but there are going to be indictments um, around people that were in his inner circle, his closest circle, um, coming down the pipe, okay? So there's that. There are some... Um, senators or House representatives that may find themselves in an unenviable position. So that is likely to happen prior to this ball dropping on Trump. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to pull out my pendulum because I just want to ask some yes, no questions. Okay, here we go. Pendulum get a good grip on this thing. Okay, so it's ready to talk. Stop. Thank you. Is Donald Trump going to still be running for president when it comes closer to, you know, that sort of nomination process? This is a no, but it's a wobbly no. Let's ask this another way. Is Donald Trump going to secure the nomination as for president from the Republican Party? That's a no. Interesting. Is Ron DeSantis going to throw his hat into the ring for president for 2024? Yes. Okay. Is Trump going to be able to draw back um, the media and donors that are rejecting him at this time? Is he going to be able to um, bring them back into like the fold? No. So it looks like now, Trump's primary um, way of communicating is going to be Twitter because that got reinstated. Is that kind of correct? Okay. And is Twitter actually going to survive in anything resembling its current form um, under the control of uh, Elon Musk? No. So it feels like that could be his primary platform, but even that is not going to have the reach. Um, are the media going to find um, a, a better balance in terms of not reporting on him continually and ad nauseum as we go forward? Are they going to find a way to sort of deliver the news but not pontificate about it? 
Yes. And that's a good thing because, you know, part, I mean, it was free advertising. I said that way back. Um, every time Trump did something, it was advertising for Trump and the Trump brand. And he is that person who doesn't care if it's positive or negative, as long as they spell his name right. <clears throat> Is Trump going to be elected president of the United States ever again? No. Okay. Let's leave it there. I want to move into, I want to look at the select committee. Okay. There's a lot of controversy about, you know, if Merrick Garland was going to do this, why didn't he do it 12 months ago or 18 months ago? Um, there's talk about, you know, this is going to delay things and that's exactly playing into Trump's hand. And that puts, you know, the country at risk for um, him becoming president again. And I think I think everybody just needs to give their, themselves a bit of a mental shake and ask themselves what Trump has Trump's success has been in the last four elections. All right. So he won the first election, but not by popular vote. The second election, he lost the House by a significant number. The third election, Joe Biden beat him handily by a really big margin um, for the presidency. And of course, that created unending legal drama and issues for Trump and his close associates going forward. And the last election, the vast majority of, well, in fact, every single one of the election deniers that he um, endorsed are, didn't win. The governors, the secretaries of states, that those higher ranking positions where they really could influence um, elections going forward. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> some of his house reps got in, some of the house reps got in, but in a way that's kind of cool because it just um, adds to um, Kevin McCarthy's downfall. Hang on a second. Sorry, got cards flying everywhere. All right, so I want to look at, um, so it's Jack Smith is, who's going to be um, kind of leading off this inquiry. I guess at some point it's going to get known as the Smith um, investigation. Um, I can tell you that um, as I stepped into Trump's energy, the uh, appointment of a special counsel actually um, frightens him and makes him very angry, very, very angry. Um, and he really does have a feeling that, um, that inquiry is going to be wrapped up way before, um, he wants it to be, he wants it to drag, um, so that again, the information doesn't get out. He has a better chance. I think that's going to happen. Let's take a look, shall we? I'm just for clarity. I'm just going to refer to it as the Smith Special um, Investigation. Um, success, potential. Smith investigation, potential success, Smith investigation. And of course, you all know I'm referring to the special counsel. Um, success, progress, special counsel under Jack Smith. So you can tell my head's fuzzy. Okay, we're starting off with the emperor. 
So I like this card because it's a card of sort of power. Um, it's a card of being in control. It is a card of, um, you know, just success. It's, it's an abundance of successes, okay? It was followed by the Nine of Pentacles. And this really does feel like um, they have a lot of the goods already in place. He is not going to go back to square one. There's going to be a lot of like review. And I understand that that has already started to happen. Um, but this really, in terms of a timeline trajectory, is not actually going to delay it that much. Although to us, it may feel like it did or it is because we were never actually privy to the, um, the timeline. One of the things that I found really interesting was that when Merrick Garland did that um, press release news announcement deal, he specifically said investigating Trump regarding January 6th and the documents case. Now, I'm sure that he may have referred to Trump before connected with the documents case. I personally don't remember him ever saying we are specifically investigating Trump with regards to January 6th. What he always said was we will follow the law and um, no one is above the law no matter who they are. That's not quite the same thing as saying, yeah, we're actually really investigating him. Okay, I don't know. Maybe you heard it. I didn't. And I thought that it was sort of really telling that he made that statement that way. So this is the thing. There is information that they're going to find out or start working with or expanding their awareness of in terms of what he tried to steal. There is a general feeling that he needs to be brought down, okay? He needs to be held accountable. And this is not politically motivated, not within the Department of Justice, honestly, and not within the special counsel. This is more about, um, you know, floating the law. It's about being so disgraceful about the way he handled the law and there is a feeling that if there if that kind of behavior is not held accountable there's going to be more of it and that's concerning okay so part of the special counsel is just going to be delving deeper and putting everything in order they have a treasure trove of documents, of insights, of all kinds of information um, that we truly are not aware of, okay? And it feels like some of it is even stuff that even the January 6th committee maybe didn't have access to or couldn't get. I don't know, but there's definitely, he, there's a lot of information and there's a lot of secrets that are going to come out. Um, and it doesn't feel like Jack Smith or those who are working with him um, care for the secrets they find. Okay. The motivation here from on high is to steer the country and steer the Department of Justice out of troubled waters to try to re-establish a non-partisan, non-biased sort of reputation. So that's what's going on. Um, it, the special counsel is not going to be a slam dunk, okay? They have some, some work ahead of them but they are prepared to dig in and do the work. And that's a good thing. Ultimately, I don't think the news is going to be good for Trump, but probably good for the country. And I have to tell you, they don't actually care about, or not to any significant degree, 
about how the general population might respond or react, okay? That is not part of what is on their radar. It's, it's sort of way in the back, but it's way in the back only in terms of this has never been done to a president before, but not how are people going to react to it, okay? And because it's never been done by, to a president before, that's part of the reason that there is all of this assessment going on. It's part of the reason that they are taking their time. They're dotting their I's. They're crossing their T's. Um, again, we have news coming forward that I think is going to be good for the, the country at large, but not necessarily for Trump. The special counsel is going to lend an air of balance. Even though everybody's, you know, the, the Republicans are yelling and screaming about how partisan it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the reality is there is going to be a feeling of a little bit of separation and, and a sort of a, a objective, balanced look. Part of the reason, thank you for telling me that, that's interesting. Part of the reason that Merrick Garland was inclined to do this um, particularly after Trump um, made known that he was going to run again, is that this allows um, them to ensure that anybody in the Department of Justice who is a Trump supporter and really cannot be unbiased is um, shielded or sheltered from that investigation. Um, special counsel kind of gets to pick his own people. I know that I know that Mayor Garland is too, but I'm just saying there seems to be that need for separation for some reason or a grant a greater separation. All right, and here we have um, you know, my trump card, right? The greedy king, the king of pentacles has always, always been my trump card. Um, it definitely looks like in terms of this thing going forward, it very much feels like he is going to do everything he can to create delays as this moves forward. Um, I don't see him actually being very successful, but make no mistake. Ultimately, though, it is a reason for the country to sort of celebrate and um continue to feel that, you know, order <laughs> is being restored. Um, the election has gone quite a way in allowing people to say, you know what, listen, this is so ridiculous. You know, this got to a place where our, our very democracy was at risk. This is not how we want to go forward. And that is a helpful energy. But, you know, overall, um, that energy needs to continue to be built up. I also, for some reason, have a funny feeling that there might be a couple of vacancies created in the House of Representatives. I don't know if there's going to be enough. I don't know. Do we actually have a final, final count of how many each has as opposed to a projection? But it feels like um, they're, they're the, sort of who who is leader of that, of the House could, or Speaker of the House, could actually shift as time goes forward. And what that's about, I'm not getting anything else. That's just the information I was given. All right, let's just ask my pendulum a couple questions and then we're going to wrap this up. Okay, so pendulum. Um, is the special counsel ultimately going to indict Trump? Yes. The other thing Merrick Garland said was that the investigation entailed people who were not outside of the Hill, implying that talking about people within the White House um, or 
even on the hill. Are there going to be other um, House representatives or senators who fall under um, an indictment also? Okay, and that's a yes. Is the work going forward um, on with the special counsel, is that going to create any significant delay in terms of them being able to move forward? No. And are we likely to see an indictment either... I don't even want to say into December. It really feels like January. Are we going to see an indictment early in 2023? Is that when we're likely to see indictments as a result of the special counsel's investigation? And that's a yes. Just a couple more kind of legal questions. Um, the, the New York investigation into the Trump Corporation business practices, is that going to result in a, uh, you know, like a win um, for Letitia James? Yes. And is Trump and the Trump family going to suffer a significant um, business blow as a result of that? Are the Trump businesses operating in New York likely to be shut down? Yes. Are we going to see indictments out of um, out of out of Georgia, out of um, Fonnie Wills's investigation into election tampering? Are there going to be indictments as a result of that? Yes. Are we going to start seeing those indictments um, being made public by the end of the year or very early into the next year? Yes. Is Trump going to be indicted in that investigation? Yes. Alrighty, that's what I know. To my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. Um, have a, a, a good Thanksgiving celebration and enjoy the, the sort of holiday weekend that follows. Um, to everybody else, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you to the donors. Um, just thankful. You know, I'm just thankful for all of you. Um, I, of course, am Canadian, so I've had my Thanksgiving, but there's never a time that it's not appropriate to just say thank you. And so I send my thanks and gratitude to each and every one of you. Until next time, take care. Be well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.